What's going on there folks? Good afternoon to most out there. It is Earthmaster checking in on the live stream here with a uh, just an update video and watching some movement out here along the North American plate. Seeing uh, a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up. Uh, by the way, it is September. Uh, September? I wish it was September. Much cooler weather. July 28th, 2021 is the date. We're well above 100 today again here in California. 12:20 uh, p.m. West Coast time. Take a look at the earthquake 3D globe. Look at all the activity that has dropped off. This is pretty much over the, just about 24 hours of earthquake activity. If I drop this down just a couple hours, you can see most, if not all of the activity over here on this side of the planet, this section of the Pacific plate, the ring of fire, extremely absent of earthquake activity. Not saying there isn't, you know, some, maybe some smaller ones, but far as the normal magnitudes go, uh, 4.0 and above, they are absent. Uh, most of the activity today confined over here on the eastern side of the Pacific Ring of Fire. That includes uh, sections of California. Uh, earlier this morning, we've seen some further movement inland into the uh, Texas area. Uh, expect uh, potential uh, to continue to see this earthquake activity ramping up along the west coast. Uh, we've seen a seismic uh, increase in earthquake magnitude at the Antelope Valley uh, fracture area from that six pointer that struck a uh, couple weeks ago now. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, see what's going on out here around the globe. Get rid of this. And you can see the lack of, lack of earthquake activity out here, even on this map. Little, little quake down here. 5.3 but overall man you can see where all the action is kind of moving at right now We're stuck over here around the uh, western United States and um, it's looking pretty interesting let me tell you let's go ahead and check out some of this activity this is the 2.5 and above now while it doesn't look like a lot um, we are seeing like I mentioned around the Antelope Valley area some uh, some larger magnitudes compared to what we had seen in the um, Aftershock sequences, also 3.5 right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. Kind of like the, uh, oh, just south of the slipping area or just south of the uh, creeping section, I should say, in this area northwest of Bakersfield. That's the, uh, uh, the plate boundary between the North American and the Pacific plate to the west here. 3.5, pretty good, man, pretty good sized quake right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. Nothing big, but uh, still some measurable movement there. Also down south, we're seeing some activity on the North American plate side of that plate boundary, a 2.6. Let's bring up the all magnitudes here, kind of get a bigger picture of what's going on. We're seeing a major, majorly seismic increase in uh, microquakes along the coastal range. I remember we've been watching this, man, for the past couple months or so. Um, and it seems as though when we get this activity ramping up here inland, I mean, obviously, we're getting some pressure on the San Andreas Fault up here on, on the north. Not super concerned about this, um, but a lot of inland quakes. We tend to see movement over here along the eastern crest of the Sierra Nevadas, uh, including areas of Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe got a little microquake. Uh, it's very possible we could see a, a little bit further movement in that region as well, also up here to the northwest of Truckee. It just seems to uh, follow that uh, line of activity. Once we see movement here uh, along the coastal range, kind of amps up over here in the uh, eastern Sierra Nevada range. And uh, regionally, looking at it from a whole, we got a lot of pressure out here along the North American plate from the Pacific plate over here to the west. Uh, we're looking at uh, interior earthquakes ramping up. And that's kind of what happened there in Texas this morning. Uh, had a, quite a few twos kicking off including a 4.3. That's a pretty good sized quake. It's ramping up a little bit. Looks like a few folks reported filling that earthquake out there around the Pecos, Texas area. You could see historical seismic activity over the last 120 years or so. Um, looks like they can get up around the 4.5 range, according to this map here, a couple throughout there. Maybe some bigger ones down south. Still not for sure the exact cause of why this earthquake activity is occurring out there. Um, there is a lot of geothermal, um, not geothermal, um, 
hydraulic fracking operations, oil pumping operations out there, um, just to the northeast of there. But um, it's also could have, you know, definitely could have a lot to do with the North American Craton area. Uh, it is kind of within that deformed Craton area where we get all these mountains and and uh, uplift and creation of these of this of this landscape. Uh, so we still have to watch it. it just it's an obvious sign of uh, you know you, a lot of pressure being put up out here today, folks. I can see it on the live seismographs. Uh, USGS not reporting every single microquake that pops up. Uh, so I've been watching those graphs pretty closely. Seems as though uh, Southern California, around uh, uh, the uh, southern end of the San Andreas Fault, San Jacinto area, seeing some microquakes. And right about the same time, we see further movement up here to the north. Uh, nothing's been reported, but I see them showing up. Um, localized earthquakes up here, independent of this activity down here. But if you really think about it, they're they're pretty much connected, right? Somewhat. Uh, if you look at the uh, the plate boundary here. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. There's the uh, activity in the Antelope Valley area. Uh, I think that, what was that, 3.1? Yeah, see, there's a couple popping up there. 2.8, 2.7. I could swear we had a three-pointer in there. It must have gotten downgraded. But activity kind of ramping up there as well. Uh, Nevada seeing a little seismically increase in the activity as well. Just this whole western, uh, all the western states out here seem to be uh, kicking up a little bit. You know, while we quiet down, while it's quiet out here along the west, Western Pacific Ring, we're looking at some action, no doubt, kicking up here. It's kind of why I like to be on guard when I see that happen. San Jacinto Fall area down here, seeing all that microquake activity. Uh, a little swarming up here in the mountains again. Uh, we've been kind of talking about this in the update videos. Uh, northeast of the Indio area, uh, Coachella, San Andreas Fault sits right here. There's no doubt specific fall areas up here, some small minor ones. But, uh, Kind of watching some swarming up here in this area. Uh, no swarming around the Salton Sea, which might be a good sign. Uh, but then again, that could possibly kick up. So we'll have to definitely keep a close eye on that region as well. Uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, even seeing a little bit of activity up there up there with a 2.9. Uh, New Madrid Fault and areas east, pretty quiet for now. Uh, but man, look up, look up here. Definitely look up here. A lot of movement. Uh, some uh, quarry blasts and whatnot going on into the state of Washington. Yellowstone National Park. Been watching this as well. A few microquakes popping up. Let's go ahead and refresh this. See if this is the uh, the latest. Well, that's kind of taking a very long time. That was pretty slow. Not for sure what's going on there. I don't think it's my internet. It shouldn't be. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Um, if you're wondering what this is once again down here people could confuse that with maybe magma right kind of showing up on all these stations out here what's going on it looks like maybe earthquakes magma moving it's not um, I've been watching this been studying this over the past week or so and these guys getting a lot of thunderstorms up there a lot of thunderstorms I'm pretty jealous you guys uh, uh, kicking up left and right check out this uh, overview of the uh, let's back out a little bit you got Wyoming here Idaho West Coast these are the radar stations monitoring the activity no doubt quite a few stations here this this color gradient of the radar by the way Yellowstone sits right right in this corner right here right right in here and this map this radar map does not show wind speed uh, does not show lightning uh, I'm looking at a couple other um, apps here on my phone and man there's a bunch of lightning kicking up out there so no doubt a lot of thunder potentially heavy rain with these cells i got one cell measuring a, uh, a potential hell size of about half an inch so uh, and that's going to continue for a little while as long as this continues here in yellowstone national park with these thunderstorms uh, then uh, you will see that signal so to speak showing up on these parks on on the, in this area it looks like a lot of earthquake activity but i just don't see that i just don't see it maybe up here 
And then again, maybe not. This kind of looks, well, it's kind of showing up right there, this earthquake activity, out a little bit. But in general, what you guys are seeing, even down here by, by Mount Sheridan, is, is a thunderstorm activity taking place um, with the seismograph stations picking it up. Thunder makes noise. It creates vibrational frequencies through the ground. And that's why you're seeing almost that consistent rumble or so. It seems like a lot. It definitely seems like a lot, but I've been watching this and it happens every single time. Every single time we get storms up here. It would be too much. I mean, if say if there was magma or something moving here, uh, it would just be odd for it to have thunderstorms every single time magma starts to move. Uh, or we get some type of a uh, movement there at Yellowstone National Park. It, it'd just be odd. Now, if this was taking place and there was no storms and no wind, then I would be, eh, I'd probably be driving back up there to investigate what's going on. But this is strictly thunderstorm activity, folks. Moving on past the Yellowstone region. Let's see what else we got here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, a few small quakes being reported. So just overall, folks, let me check Hawaii real quick, see what's going on out there in the Pacific. <clears throat> um, quite a bit of movement around the Kilauea volcano area, right smack dab in the crater as well. Very shallow quakes. I don't think we got any updated status on the Kilauea region. Uh, it still sits at yellow. When was this put out? Okay, this was just put out yesterday. So Kil Kilauea volcano is currently not erupting. No surface activity has been observed by field crews or in webcam images. That may change. Uh, seismic activity has decreased in the past week while summit inflation has continued over the past several months. Could resume eruption or that Kilauea is entering a longer period. Eh, I don't know. With all that earthquake activity, something to watch. Um, Hmm. So anyway, Kilauea is still sitting at about uh, what we got advisory with the code uh, of yellow, and this article was put out yesterday. Looks like the east rift zone uh, seismic activity persisted along the upper east rift zone at slightly elevated levels over the past week. Uh, together with the uh, geodetic monitoring, the observations suggest that summit and upper east rift zone continue to be replenished with magma. By contrast, the lower east rift zone was mostly quiet. Where'd my, okay, here we go. So yeah, something to watch, definitely something to watch out here when we start seeing some deeper movement down here. Let's see what these are at. 5.3 of course all this activity down here remains deep for the most part uh, about 32 35 kilometers for all of these so yeah just kind of watching it see if anything changes with the uh, with the movement taking place on the uh, east rift zone uh, let's see Puerto Rico let's jump over here real quick seen an increase in activity out here as well um, and kind of watching the Puerto Rico trench region 78 kilometers for that deep earthquake uh, 3.8 this is the area to watch folks for some uh, significantly large magnitudes in the future not saying today not saying who knows when it could be today hopefully not 
but uh, definitely in the future there's a uh, potential for mega quake in this area. Also some movement uh, just to the north of Puerto Rico, even deeper at 109 kilometers. So a lot of movement taking place, a lot of unusual activity taking place um, all over the globe, seems like within the past couple weeks here. So just be on guard. I have a feeling something's brewing out here. It's either the West Coast or Japan. I keep saying that for the next large, large quake. Um, yeah, what else we got? I think that's about it. A bunch of query blasts down there in San Diego area. Alright folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I will be monitoring this activity. Like I said, I, on these seismographs there, see that activity showing up there on the uh, Petrolia station? That's uh, some localized earthquake activity. Very small, but activity nonetheless nonetheless and it kind of matches for some reason watch what watch what happens as we come up around the bend here and look at the Barrett station in Southern California kind of matches this activity right just a little bit after this activity taking place so it's kind of kind of odd either there's some interference in the in the same seismographs or the entire plate is moving roughly at about the same time to the north and then to the south down, down Southern California and then here in Northern California. So I think something's brewing out here, folks. I'm going to go fill up my gas tank, make sure I got plenty of fuel. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay cool out there. I know a lot of heat, a lot of heat kicking out, kicking off uh, all over the place, it seems like, including in my backyard. It's supposed to be like 106. And that's the actual temperature. That's not heat index. That's the actual temperature. All right, folks. Catch you later. Stay safe.